<laughs> so anyways, hey, we're back. I'm Charlie. I'm Athena. Hey, we're back here uh, in our podcast. We're yep. Just, uh, this is the Raise Up Podcast, where you can see all of our podcast episodes on raiseupmindset.com. So welcome. Thank you for joining. Yes. As our listeners are getting bigger and are we getting a bigger audience, I'm sure we're being a lot more funnier and wow. things are fun. Mm. Well, um, you know, we have been going down this road of filming podcasts and you can see how our podcasts have developed from the beginning on to where they're at now. Oh. You feel like you were a little more tense in the beginning? Oh, my word. I mean, talking in front of a camera about our own personal shit. I mean, <laughs> are you kidding me? I mean, he was like, you know, you're like, it's the first time you're on the TV screen, you're like, what do you do? You know? <laughs> I remember Don't the question. Your nose. <laughs> you were like, uh, well, who's going to interview us? <laughs> and I'm like, for the host. That's like, fuck. So like, it's well, easier when people ask you questions, you <laughs> just come up with it. Now you got to come up with your own shit, you know? <laughs> but as you do it, it just comes easier because it's like free flow now. It's just like, we're rappers. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're rappers but we're not we're rappers but we're not we're rapping about our we're rapping about our story <laughs> yeah yeah so, so I, I think one of the things you want to one of the things we really want to discuss is like we just went to this waken inner circle our higher power group that we went to and how we're learning things yeah and you know our our fundamentals really are we want to give back to people when we learn things we want to give back and so we've been in the mentor role and we've been in the mentee role and so I thought it would be really helpful for those that have never even like thought about getting a mentor or um, like how how do I even go about that and then what makes up like being a mentee so like for the people that you've mentored what were some of the things that you really appreciated that they did and so i thought we'd just kind of get into that you know i kind of think of it as the teacher and the pupil you know it really is because as a student you're kind of like a sponge and you're trying to suck all this in forward and the teacher is just pouring everything out on you and you know and you're you're taking what you can take yeah. and then now as uh you know, as, as we get older in our uh, professions and in our life, we have knowledge. And, you know, it's, it's like our parents telling us all these things that we did. We're like, oh, these guys don't know nothing. You know, that's, that's the pot that you're We're so in that old right school. Now. <laughs> you're so old school. You know, you don't understand, Dad, you know. And, that was back then. Yeah. And so as we get older, we really started that they had some... They had some nuggets. They had some stuff they could have gave us. And if we had took it in, we would have been a lot better off. But, yeah. you know. We but just, we had to find out on our own. <laughs> you know, and... and I think that's just anything in life, you know, it's just, we have to kind of trip and fall sometimes to figure out where we're at. And, um, you know, hearing some people, I, I'm going to bring up a name, Paul Landis, you know, he, he talks about his group and his managers and his things. And sometimes he has to see them kind of um, trip and stumble sometimes to be able to become a better person. And I think we have trip, stumble, got ran over and, and uh, done ditches and all this <laughs> other stuff to figure out where we're at now. But we're in a good place. We're in a great place. We're in a uh, we're in a good health place. We're getting better with our health. We're getting better with our mindset. We are agreeing a lot more. Our relationship's probably the best it's ever been, and uh, so we're in a good place. So, when you find out about the best piece of steak in the world, you want to tell everybody about the best piece of steak in the world. We want to tell people where we are at now because everybody is stuck sometimes, and when they're stuck. It's like you can't get out of the mud unless somebody you helps don't you don't know. Out. You don't even know You don't know how. what you don't know. <laughs> you don't know how, and so then you feel like you're hopeless because not only do you not know how, like there's no hope. And some people are scared to ask for help. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of people out there that just want to have that facade that everything's fucking great. And yeah. You guys will watch my mouth. I'm sorry. Beep. Um, but you have to understand you don't know what you don't know. And if we could help you... Uh, we're not asking for any money. We're not asking for anything else. We just want to help because this is what we do. We're kind of like those people that like sucking in the, on, a, uh, on a sponge, and then we want to we want to rain shower to you guys and let you know what we're learning. Because if it wasn't for people like Danny, it wasn't like our 2020 group that like all these people. If it wasn't in, the trail of people in the our train from, wreck that we came not from. The the train wreck the train that we wreck. came from. We wouldn't know that, that we were the sole survivors of that train wreck. And we are trying to go forward to tell you not to take seat 2B. <laughs> because 3C was way better. <laughs> so uh, as we learn, we want to pass We want to share because we want to make the world a better we place. We raise it up. And that's really what this podcast is about is raising up your mindset and yeah the core values are our core values but honestly 
it really does start with, like you mentioned in the last episode, you have to decide that you want things to be better. And then once that decision is made, then it's like, other things you don't have to decide anymore because you've already made this higher decision and the stuff down here doesn't matter now. So I think that helps, absolutely. But looking back, like there's a process to receiving all that we've received and to this point to get to where we're at. And that's really the key is that you have to be in a place to receive. And if you are in a mindset that you're you can do this on your own, that you don't need any help, that if you don't do it, it's not gonna get done right, like that's the opposite of receiving. And that's gonna keep you stuck longer. It's not gonna allow you the freedom that you could feel to be in this higher space. So what we're trying to say is, you don't have to go through World War II to get to the other side you can just take some friendly advice and if you're willing to receive it, yeah, you, you don't have to go through the trenches. You don't have to go through the BS to get to the point. And if we could receive earlier, if I could receive, I'm not gonna speak for her, but if I could receive things in a different way, I mean, shit, I thought I, I knew everything I needed to know at that time to be where I'm at, to be the successful person I thought I was, when it was a lot of smoke and mirrors there. Like the, the, when I say smoke and mirrors, it wasn't like we weren't putting the time and the energy into it. It just was a lot of wasted time, a lot of wasted energy and things that we could have really been way further ahead. But everything happens for a reason. Everything happens where you, sometimes you go through the trenches and things like that. But it, if you can see past that point, if you can see past the trenches, you can see past the, the fire, you can see past all the other stuff, it's a much easier place to be. You don't have to be stuck in that. You don't have to be stuck in that realm, and that's that's the whole thing. It's like I I really feel that we have been stuck, or I have been stuck in some places that I just couldn't get myself out of. Like I was so stuck in the mud that you couldn't pull me out with a truck. But once you realize that I'm not really stuck, like you can swim out of this, you're okay. So. But you had to go through a breakthrough moment. So where was your breakthrough moment? What, which breakthrough you want to talk about? Well, the like what whichever one comes to mind at this well, like, point. Like like as we talked about weight loss. I mean, I, I was I was really to a point that I was just uh, I wasn't my heaviest I've ever been, mm -hmm. but I was in a comfortable place. So I was knew I wasn't doing better, and I would always float that different twenty or thirty pounds because I would always be in that. 320 pound to 350 pound and I just thought you know what I, I don't want to be here anymore 300 is not even a goal I want to be at my I set my goal at 240 so I'm like now right in the 280s and yeah. I'm, I'm I'm now I got 40 pounds more to lose and that's my goal and I guess if you don't set a goal you don't have a benchmark to hit and so as we set benchmarks my wife's like oh yeah we're gonna we're gonna have to do 15 million in five years i'm like oh, we're at seven million now i mean she's just she's, she's crazy but you know what happened we hit in that two years million. yeah but as you learn you don't have to accept everything that just comes at you you can make your own destiny you can set your own goal so now i'm on a more mindset because you see what you can really do and that, and that was during the toughest time, one of the toughest times for America, for the whole world was during COVID is that we were really thriving during COVID. And I am so sorry for some of the people that really had some struggles and problems because I know a lot of people lost their homes, they lost their businesses, they lost family members, it was there. And it was really hard to sit back and hear all these stories. That and were, support the people that were, I mean, we were on support calls, 100%. encouraging. Going and, back to it though, it's just really getting to it, like we were really thriving in it and we didn't want to gloat by any means that we were doing so well because us were like, when we had that mindset, like we're gonna pull back, we're thinking about cutting wages, we're talking about cutting staff. And we just took a breather for 48 hours and just said, we're gonna get make it past this. We're okay, we have money, we're, we have money in the bank, we're good, nothing's coming to an end. Let's figure it out. So if you wanna go back even further, I think that was probably one of our benchmarks that we really thought we can do this, we can make it through. This is a, a pandemic, it's there, but we're gonna make ourselves available, we're gonna partner with everybody we can, we're gonna make it through this. And then as you're now, the most recent thing is, I think it's my weight loss and then just me coming to realization that I don't know shit. I mean, when I say that, all everything I thought I knew was just so surface level that there's just so much more out there now that you're like, holy tamale, there is more to what we know than we don't. And as I talked about in our previous ones, just having the blinders on, 
when you have a horse that just has blinders on, he can only see down the middle of the road. He can't see the rest of it. And so when you realize that you don't have those blinders anymore and, and you could just take them off, everything is in plain view. It's like you're seeing the whole entire country. You're seeing the whole world in front of you. And you're like, okay, none of this is stuff is impossible to do anymore. No. Do I really want to put the time and energy in this one? Or do I want to focus my time and energy in this? Because now you can choose. You're not stuck doing the same thing every day. You have opportunities that are way past what we thought we could do. Yeah, and options Yes, that are just like, wow, this is a whole nother level of like, I thought freedom looked like this, but then there's like this level and it, it's, it's remarkable. But you have to be in that place of receiving. So we get in front of ourselves and we're our biggest obstacles sometimes. And I think all the time. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that it too. Like, you know, when you look at what we can do and what we're willing to do is two different things. I mean, in the very time when you're not, when you're in those trenches, and I, if that doesn't make sense, let me rephrase it a different way. If you're not in the right mindset, it's going to be hard for you to hit that next plateau. But if you're in the right mindset, that plateau doesn't really mean anything. Like, I had the hardest time breaking that 300 goal. And then I hit the 390 goal. Then I hit the 280 goal. And I know like, this is not so hard. So as you go through those things, you plateau a little bit, but then you just sit there for a little bit and then it reopens up again and you hit that new plateau. So as long as your goal is still there, you're gonna hit those goals. As long as you keep keep yourself to it and you keep yourself honest to it. So I think that's one of the bigger things that I've seen in this whole thing. and. By going to these external groups that we go to, and I say external because it's not internal in our it's town. Not, it's not in our bubble. It's not our, well, not even just in our bubble, but like, um, it's not in our region. I mean, we're traveling, uh, we're traveling everywhere. We're, I, I've never been to Texas so much in my life. I mean, Texas I is like, like Texas. I know my wife likes Texas because of food, but um, <laughs> and the people, and that we've met some amazing people, and we've met some amazing artists and some other things, but. We're, we're going to Arizona, we're going to Costa Rica, we're going to all these different places and regions all over the world that we don't know anything about. There's opportunities. And when I tell you opportunities, guys, I mean, I'm a guy that didn't own a house until what year did we buy our first house? We, eight I years think ago? 2016? Yeah, eight years ago. Yeah. So we bought our first house eight years ago because I was in financial debt. I was, I was, I, I had debt. I had things then, or I, I had ways that I couldn't buy a house. I couldn't do it. Now we own nine homes. We're on our tenth. We're buying it. We have one commercial property. We've bought three houses in the last six months. Um, I mean, we are looking at different opportunities. And this is a person that couldn't qualify for a house in 2016. It's not because the, we didn't have the money. It was the credit. It was everything else that was it. There was. It was a long list of things that happened in, our, in my life that I created that I thought I knew what was best. And then once I opened the eyes and just really realized it, does that mean they make me the biggest, best business owner? Hell no. I mean, there's people that have perfect credit and probably had two or three homes before they were 18 or 21. But as we went through the trenches, we realized that we don't have to live that lifestyle anymore. We don't have to be in that debt. We don't have to be in that bondage of where we were before we are out of that now and like you could breathe yeah. i mean you're breathing not from here but you're breathing from here because yeah. danny told me that you could breathe from your stomach i'm like no but your lungs are up here so how do you breathe in your stomach he goes and you're like holy shit i'm higher i'm lightheaded you know but you really realize that you could breathe and you could do things differently than you did before yeah so and it's you, okay it's okay and it's okay to be different like there's some people i thought were just weird but they weren't weird, they were differently, but they, now I'm kind of that weird, differently kind of guy <laughs> <laughs> that is like, okay, maybe I can breathe from my stomach. Even though there's no lungs in my stomach, they're all in my chest, because I know that as a medic, I, 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 as an EMT, I know that, but now I can use that full space where I wasn't using before. Is that, yeah. is that the yeah. best way to do it? Is that you don't have to just breathe from the upper, you can breathe the, breathe from the ower and you take more oxygen in. And the more oxygen you take in, the more clear you get. And sometimes you get a little more lightheaded because you're hyperventilating, because I thought <laughs> Danny was trying to put us in some trance. But when you realize there's things that you can do that you weren't comfortable doing before, that's okay. It's okay. Because we're around the uncomfortable people that were around that were doing the same thing. And we're all looking at each other like, what are we doing here? You know. But we were looking for a higher self. We were looking for a place that was way different than we've ever done. Because I can tell you that John Rafferty and Tracy Raymer and all of our people in our 2020 group, Becky, all these other people, 
there was none of that shit we're doing. I mean, if one of those people had done it in the room, all of us would have scratched and I'd have been the first one like, okay. To tease them. This person's off the island. There's no more of this person on the island anymore. But you've now, been your mind has been opened to that. Yeah, you're you're opened up to things. And again, you don't know what you don't know. I right. am gonna I'm gonna patent that and put it on a t shirt and I think it's gonna be like the smile face that we're gonna make millions off of it. But you know, I think that um, really what you're saying is that staying in that receiving mode where you're just not going to judge, you're just going to be open to the idea that maybe you don't know everything and that you can learn from everybody. Well, it's the pupil mode. I, I figure it's the, it, we're not being the mentors, we're being mentored. We're mentees, sense? yeah. We're mentees. I like the pupil and teacher because it makes more sense to me, but I hear you, the mentees. We're being mentored by somebody else who's there. And I go back to Danny, um, and uh, I'm a big fan of Danny now, and I, I didn't, wasn't, and I, you know, now spending some time with him, I got, we get to go to dinner with Danny, and the CEO invited us out to dinner, and you know, he had a thousand people in this place, and I, I just went to Danny, I said, hey Danny, there's some things that are really going on in my mind I really want to talk to you about. And he sat down and spent 15 minutes with us, and he's very approachable, very talkable, and things like this. And I told him some ideas, and he implemented it by four o'clock that afternoon, and I thought, that is a leader that I can get behind because he's got some ideas and it's like um, some of the people that work for us, they come to us with a great idea and they say, what do you think about this? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And he's like, we don't need to talk about it. We don't need to put a bid out for it. I'm like, no, you know, we you come up with a great idea. We're going to implement it and make it happen right away. And he was the same kind of mindset that I think we were looking for. And you appreciate that because that's how you operate. Yeah. I'm, and, and so much, I feel like I'm like Danny in so many ways and I can learn from him that uh, I feel like that uh, I can respect that. Like if you, nothing against Amway, but if you ask me to sell Amway tomorrow, I'd be your, probably your worst salesman in the world because I, I don't know nothing about Amway, but if you teach me something and you can do it, I can sell it. I can, I can, can talk about it. it. I can get behind it. Yeah, and I, I say sell it because sell it to me means I can talk to you about it and I can make you understand it. But if you, uh, if you don't believe in the product and you don't do it, I mean, I came in in a, such a broken area that when I first went to my first awaken, I feel like I'm just a wide open book. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna receive. I'm gonna just take it and receive because I saw the difference when you came back from your first two that you were just like this different person. I was like, mm, I don't think I'm on the same pathway as you right now, and I didn't do it. So I, I, I looked at there and I was just like, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna surrender to anything and everything right now and just kind of see what this looks like. And then when you talk to some of the people that are in there and they're so inviting, so giving, so nice, so everything they're that was there. They're very open too. They're very kind. Yeah, a little open. bit weird open sometimes because it was a little bit like... <laughs> it was a little bit much. It was a lot of fucking like oversharing at first because you and I like, you know, sometimes a lot of people like to overshare to us and like, oh, That shit. happens to us though, you know. It does. And it's because I think we are, uh, people look at us in a different way, um, like a trusting, like a safe haven. Like they're safe. And I think some of that's from... Our businesses of being mentors to some of our employees, and and I think some of that comes from the fire EMS side of us, and you know as you used to be a volunteer and we used to be on the department together, and then um, doing some of that stuff, we always look for a safe haven for people. So Danny's kind of a safe haven. His group is a safe haven. Uh, I love my old twenty twenty groups. Any wills, great group. There got a lot of education, got a lot of things there, but this is so much different for us because. It, it, again, it goes into the spiritual side and the pupil side and the mentor side. So I feel like we're gaining things for him so we can bring back to you guys to tell you what we've learned and how yeah. different it is for us. I mean, when I came back from my first awaken, Steve in our office, our, our he operations asked me what manager, I did he goes, to you. He goes, what'd you do to Charlie? Like, he's totally different, but you don't know what you don't know. And I can't say that enough because we get stuck in those ruts that we just think that we we have all this answers in it and we are so surface level in some so many things that yeah. there's such a higher area in some other things and don't get me i still think there's some woo woo out there but it's less woo woo and more realistic now well you're seeing it work in your own life and and i think that that's really that's like the the pathway to this like higher place in business this pathway to a higher place in whatever it is that you are looking to cultivate in your life it's being open to learning from others and uh, and not just from this well I'm going to hear what you have to say but I don't know if I believe it it's more like I'm just going to receive and when you're in that receptive mode it's like the judgment falls away 
Oh, your blockades are down. Your, yeah, your, your, down. your blocks are down. That's your a great way to down. put it. Your blocks are down. Because if, if if I have a force field in front of me, you can't shoot me. You can't hurt me. You can't take care of me. But if your force field's down and you're just like, all right, let's let's hear what you have to say. Um, and I, I might not believe everything you're saying or I might not do it, but I'm going to take it all in and I'm going I'm I'm to run it through my decoder. I'm going to yeah. run it and see if it makes sense. And when your decoder's open... And you're you're open to listening to what somebody has to say, and you, you actually they have your attention and what's going on. Maybe this is not so far fetched. Maybe this is, maybe there's some truth to this. And then as you hear it, and then you hear testimonies. And I think I think one of the things like we're giving you as a testimony right now, I feel yeah. like we're giving, is that um, when you hear testimonies and what it's changed in people's life and. There's this couple. It's amazing in our group, and I mean that they were on the verge of divorce and having all these issues, and and and. They thought it was over this little financial place, but it was so much deeper than where it was at, you know. And 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 they were on the same wavelength, but they just weren't speaking to each other. It's like one was speaking Japanese and the other one was speaking Spanish, and they couldn't understand each other. But Danny connected that group to them, and it made them see like, hey, you guys are not so far off here, you know. And and um, I'm not going to mention who the group is because it's private. But what was funny is like Danny asked some really simple questions, like you know, they thought it was a financial thing, and. They, He's like, well, how much equity is in your house? And he's like, well, I got like four million in equity in his house. He's like, what? Like he was, a, he was. You guys aren't broke. <laughs> you guys are not broke. You're not having a financial issue. You guys are having this issue. What's going on here? And it, it and it just made sense to them. And it, and again, when you go in there with your force fields up, you go up to your walls block, and like all of us, you know, when we get hurt, we start. We're we're the best brick builder in the world. We'll we'll build a wall that nobody can touch. And if that wall's not big enough, we're going to build a bigger wall. Um, and when you put those walls down and just say, hey, it's an open border. You can go across as much as you want. You can come back and forth. Well, now it's not so, nobody's trying to escape in. Nobody's trying to escape out. It's open. It, there's no have to take anything or steal anything because it's wide open. It, it's, it's an open playing field. And when it's open playing field, you're safe. And when you're safe, you're willing to receive. Yeah. And at least in my mind, that's how it that's how I can relate to you. If you can relate right. to me is that's how it is. So when you go into this the, these different groups and whatever group you're into. I mean, whatever it, it could be, Pokemon, it could be whatever you want it to be. Whatever but, your community that is supporting you and your goals and your connection, whatever that is, like it's, it's that's what you're saying is it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily, it, it's being open and not being in this space of I'm on an island. Yeah. And when you're not on an island, you, you have opportunities to go other places. You know, when you're on the island, you're stuck. And I don't feel like I'm stuck. Like I can tell Athena, hey, uh, we're going to Hawaii in two days from now, and shit, we, I just need to get out of town. And she'll be like, okay, we'll make it work, you know, because we're not stuck. We're not stuck in one place. We're gonna have to rework the puzzle a little bit, but we're not stuck. And so, when you think you can't do things, you limit yourself. Yes, that's and I think that's the best way I can do it. When you think, oh, I can't take the time off, but it's so funny. We have so many friends that we talk to about that, and I'm gonna throw Nane Nichols right under the bus. Ooh. I love Lane Nichols. I, I love the Nichols he family. Our podcast. It's all right. His family will, and they'll they'll show it to him. And he'll he'll I'll get a phone call. But that man's like, oh, I got to be at work. It's end of the month. I got to sell cars. Days a week. This guy's probably one of the most successful people I know, and I love hanging out with Nate because him and I are so alike in so many different ways. And uh, but uh, it's his limited belief, and I will tell him to his face the same thing. When he wants to go something, he just takes off. He doesn't care. Like, but he has to get to the point to where he's going to blow oh, in yeah. order to give himself permission to take time off. And then when he leaves and comes back, it might have not went perfect, but the house didn't burn down. Nope. Everything, everything still fine. worked. He's still good. He's still everything like that. But he's like, nope, nope. It's in the month. Got to do it. Got to push. Got to push, push, push. And I'm like, Lane, shit, man. You have this empire at your back door. Breathe. It's okay. You don't have to breathe be afraid. Breathe from the stomach. Yeah, breathe from the stomach. Because <laughs> him are both big guys, you know. But there's so many of us that are like that, yeah. that we feel like. And then what they feel is safe when they want to go and they want to do something, it's okay. So I, you can be that all the way all the time. doesn't mean that you have to abandon your business and it's just like it's going to run itself. You still have to have structure. You still have to have people. You have to have key people in place to do that. And by getting key people in place is being right with yourself. Like... You're it's not okay. going to attract good people if you're a train wreck. Yeah. Oh, shit. I don't know how, how we made it have happened this so far. We were just talking to one of our employees today, Jessica. She's been with us 12 years. And so I was talking to Jessica today, and I looked at Athena. I said, you know what? Her and her husband have just got married, and they haven't come back to there. Let's buy them plane tickets and bring them home. Let's just 
let them come here because she's been with us for 12 years now. What can we do to gift her? So in my mind, I think she was saying, what was it, like seven or $800 per plane ticket to come home? I don't know. Who cares? Let, let's have her bring her home. So anyways, I, I'm sorry I'm getting off topic a little bit. <laughs> That is just a piece of you, like wanting to give back to somebody who's given to you. Yeah, she and she has, and she's been loyal. And we even talked about it one time. I, I, and I'm going to throw Jessica on the bus. She told me one time she's like, "You don't care about the employees." I'm like, "How would you ever say that?" I I I, I barbecues. I do all this stuff for them. And she's like, "Well, because I don't want to be a night shift." And I was told by another employee that you and it was my manager that you didn't care. I'm like, I never even knew this was happening. And when she realized that really wasn't, she was able to receive. Yeah. She's like. Wow. You're right. It wasn't you. I'm sorry. And I'm like, but she was so blinded by what one person told her that she trusted that it wasn't there. So again, if you have the right people and jobs, she has been remote for us now, what, like six years, seven Long years time. now? And she does an excellent job. She's a great remote employee. And we're lucky that we've kept her on. And she is, she's solid, solid as a rock. So again, your limited beliefs of what can happen and what can't happen are, are stumble blocks. So back to Awaken. Well, so really, I was going to just mention for, for people that are looking to like find, find something that, um, gosh, how do I start to get to the next level? And uh, no matter what your area of expertise is or what your industry is, you don't just have to go to the six groups that offer are offered in your niche industry. You can broaden your scope to an entrepreneurial group in general, or if you're a CFO, there's CFO groups or CEO groups or manager groups. Like, don't be limited to just, I'm going to step into my industry and they only offer these four groups and th there's the who's who or whatever. Like, step outside and see what's available. And how you can find these is if you're on social media, you can start following people that are resonating with you in, in, that, in this space and time that you're in, in your season. And once you see, yeah, actually that guy's making sense and, or this lady, I, I can resonate with her, start following them. And oftentimes some of those individuals, they do have an inner circle group or they are offering some sort of community support. What we, I think I highly undervalued, especially in my earlier years of owning a business, is how much encouragement does for me. It, it, it is just so substantial to be in a community where, I mean, Charlie, honestly, there's a lot of our friends that when we just starting in business where they're like, well, why would you want to do that? Why are you working so hard? I would never work as hard as that. Or, and it was almost like it was the opposite of the encouragement and support that we needed to keep like pressing forward. These groups offer that for you. Whereas maybe you don't tell uncle Bob that you're off on this new venture because he's not the, the person that's going to support you. He's, he wants you to play it safe. He wants you to feel like everything is going to fit in the bubble and you're just going to do what everyone else did. And we know that's safe where you've got it in your heart to be like this shooting star over here in this corner. And um, he's not the one to share that dream with. But being in a community that supports you with people who maybe are a few steps ahead of you that are giving you encouragement and instruction and, hey, why don't you try it this way? You're moving farther, faster. And you're also doing it from this like uplifted spirit as opposed to just trudging through the mud and just pushing through because everybody's got a bad attitude, but you have a dream that you're, you're looking to fulfill. Yeah, you said that well. Um, all these things were coming to my mind. Like everybody can't be, and I, I don't want to put this in a negative content by any means, but like, there's so many people who want to be a rock star, but only so many people are going to be it. So many people want to be in the NFL and so many soon are going to make it. It doesn't mean that you can't make it. You just have to, that's going to be your dream. It's going to be your thing. And it might not be your uncle's dream. It might not be your dad's dream. It might not be it. They might have had different resources at the time where they were coming up that they made the choices they did. And it doesn't mean I'm wrong or anything like that. And it doesn't make anything different. You could be what you want to be. And, and it's so funny as everybody's like, you can be president when you grow up. Well, I mean, you, you could, you, if you pushed it and you really wanted to be it. I mean, but do I you like, want to be? <laughs> yeah, is, if you want to be in politics at this time of periods, but um, 
it was a limited belief that I thought it was like, not everybody could become president, but I would have never thought half the people that are president now would ever become president. So as, as your limited beliefs come in your mind, you can kind of do what you want to do. You can join what you want to join. You can be part of what you want to be part of. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's uh, if you're looking to be yourself higher, do I want to listen to 20 podcasts a day? Hell no. I, I'm not that podcast person, but will I listen to two or three solid people? that were there that would give me the message I want to hear? Yes. Or, or that I you're go, ready to receive. Would I go to a seven-day conference and sit in, in there and do breathing treatments and attempt to maybe look at yoga or something like that? Well, I don't know, but I've done it. But I, I took away the nuggets I took from it and, and it's gotten to be where we're at now. And we're no higher being than anybody else. We're just telling the story of what we've done yeah. and trying to get you through your next story to where it's at there because... We've been fortunate enough to have people take the time to mentor us. Uh, I got to throw a name out there, Brian Conister. I, I, I love Brian Conister. And Brian I, was a solid mentor for us. Solid mentor. He solid. was a gentleman that really had the heart of a teacher who was patient, who listened, who, who saw us in our stuck perspective and just gently would kind of needle us through and um, those were just attributes uh, and and he was he was consistent so if we scheduled an appointment with him like he never canceled on us it was like those are things that I think if you're looking for a one-on-one -on -one mentor that those are really attributes that I appreciated yeah okay. You know, I, I could call Brian at 10 o'clock at night and he'd answer my phone calls. He, I, he would answer whenever I was in problems because he knows I just didn't call him to call him. I called him because there was a purpose. There was something reason. going on. Or I called him to see how he's doing or things like this. And uh, I bring up his name because he married us. He was our pastor for quite some time. And he was a friend to us. Yeah. And he never turned it. As matter as tough things got tough or whatever else that was going on in my life, there were some very dark moments in my life that were there. He was 100% right there. Never judge me, never did anything like that. So when I look at those people, those are the people you're looking for to be your mentor, be in that stuff. It's like when you're in a shitty time, you have to trust somebody to be able to get you out of that or at least open the blinds for you to say, you're only stuck there because you want to be there right now. And those were some of the times that were really tough for me is like, you know, knowing where I was stuck at. And I was like, well, I can choose... I use I use I, I'm a big name dropper on this stuff. It's not because I think these people are are above or anybody else, or they're or they're super important people. They were important people to our life. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Daryl Thompson, I, I love his analogy. The floor goes up 28 floors up the top, and it goes right down to the basement. You can get off any floor you want to. You can decide if you want to hit the basement, which is rock bottom, or you can get off the second, third, fourth, or the 20th floor. It's your choice to get off that elevator wherever you want to get off. And where you get off is where your platform starts. I thought to myself, what a great concept. I mean, you don't have to hit rock bottom to realize that you don't want to be at the basement level. You want to be yeah. at the second floor, third floor. You can get off at any level and start where you want to start off. And you can be at the top level. And if the 20th floor is you decide to be, that's fine. You can go up the stairs. You can go up the elevator. You can go whatever way you want to. But you don't have to hit rock bottom. Yeah. So... And some of the places we've hit rock bottom and you need somebody like somebody as a mentor or somebody else that you can believe in or sometimes it's just a perfect perfect stranger that Says can bring something. you out of it. Yeah. yeah. And I think that sometimes the perfect strangers are more um, beneficial, at least it has been towards me because there's nothing they want from you. Like they're not telling you this because they want a free limo ride from you. They're not telling you this because you can plow their driveway. It's not telling us because you might give them a stock. They're just offering you a feedback loop. They're, they're giving you. And that, I, I guess that's where we're at. It's like, we're not asking anything from any of you guys. We're not wanting anything from you guys. We're, we're spending time out of our day because somebody has spent time out of their day. Yeah. Um, if it was paid or free or whatever else it is, they wanted to teach a higher self to us, which we want to teach a higher self to you guys because... We don't have to be stuck in this rut. We don't have to be stuck in these things anymore. We can be out of it and we can be it. We can be living a joyful life. And I might experience something from you 10 years from now that I got a nugget from you that because you saw this, you came to me and said, hey, you know what? I saw your podcast 15 years ago and that really resonated with me because that would be payment 
and no. huge for us. Yeah, that would be huge for us to know that we impacted somebody's life because there's so many people that have an impact on our life that we've gotten so much from that we probably wouldn't be here today talking about this as a married couple or business partners or whatever else it is because we got so much more from somebody else's story. And I think the stories are the best part. I, I If I can hear good stories, if they had podcasts of stories that more I would resonate with, I'd probably listen to more of them. But I, I guess second Now, one of the, the best stories I think that I've heard you tell is how fast you can change your mind about something. Yeah, and, that and that tears in my eyes. Yeah, that, that's that. that the one Brian tells, tells about. The um, it's the like you can decide guy. in an instant to change your perspective just just by deciding. So I, I, I'll try to say it without getting teary eyed. But the, Brian told the story in one of his uh, in his uh, things in, in his his um, his pastoral in his sermons. sermons. That's what I was looking for the word. And it just talks about a gentleman that was like a kind of a macho gentleman that saved all this money to buy this Corvette. And he loved this Corvette. It was just beautiful red Corvette. And he was so proud of it. And he was driving it and just glistening. And as he's driving by one day, some kid throws a rock at his Corvette. And he is so upset. Like his most beautiful car that he purchased, he did it, put a big, huge dent into it. And he hits the brake, smokes his tires coming backwards. And this kid runs off. And he's like, I'm going to kill this kid. And he's so furious and everything like that. And the reason the kid threw the rock is nobody would stop. Well, his brother got hit by a car and, uh, sorry, I get a little choked up, but um, his brother got hit by a car and he was wrapped up in a bicycle down below bleeding and he couldn't get anybody to stop to help him because he was just a little kid waving him down. So anyways, this guy runs down there, sees his kids hurt and uh, throws him in the car, bleeding all over his car. In that instant, he just really thinks that he was so mad that he was going to kill this little kid and saw that really the kid threw the rock to stop somebody to... to... Save his brother. Yeah, and you know, you look at that and just think, just like that, he changed his innocence. And he just changed it right then and there. And then, you know, he put him in the car and took him to the hospital. So he went from rage to killing to being a protector helper immediately and wanted to take care of the kid and didn't care about his car, didn't care about anything. He might have been a little bit upset at the end of the ball game, but at the end of the ball game, it was more important for him for the wife or the kid. Yeah, that human was more important. And it's like... So I tell you, I get choked up on this one. I'm sorry, I get a little teary-eyed here, but it, you, you can resonate with the story because as as I think as first responders, we want to help everybody because that's part of our calling and we want to help people. And when you hear about that heartfelt thing, like this guy was so upset, his prized possession, he maybe at that time spent 60 or 70,000 yeah. his hard-earned money, but it, instantly he changed his mind. And I think a lot of us could do that. It's like, well, when you look at that, it's just like, we can be mad at that person or we can just forgive that person and be past it. And then we don't hold that anymore. And it's like not that creating negative a block. Energy, that negative energy blocks, whatever you want to talk about, building the bridge or whatever else you're saying, uh, build the wall. We choose to hold on to that sometimes. And I know I've held on to a lot of shit in my, my, in my head from being a kid to all the way to where I'm at now. But I feel like a lot of that stuff is gone now. I, I don't hold that as near as much. And when you're holding on to that stuff, it's a little tougher. Yeah, it creates resistance and then you you it's you're unable to be open and then you're not able to receive what the mentor truly could give you if you're if you have this resistance within you. And so I think that kind of like brought us back to the last episode that we did where it's oh. like it's it's really so much more than just about hitting your numbers and keeping your payroll down and making sure that you're doing revenue generating activity like you've really got to get a support team around you and that could look like a community that could look like a, a solid mentor that could be a coach that you're specifically focusing on about this aspect of your life but the point is is that we need others to run this race with us we need to be in community and we need to take the time to lift each other uh, in, in different moments and opportunities that we have. And like Charlie just mentioned with that story, we can change our mind that quickly about everything if we decide. And it doesn't feel like it's that easy to do, but it's true, we can. And um, it's a beautiful thing when you're, you're in a situation where you see somebody just make that decision and their whole life changes. And you were a part of that spark or that seed or that encouragement that is like 
helping them grow into this higher place where they're happier. Could you imagine a world if people just were filled with joy and they weren't stressing about stuff that they don't have any control over? I mean, holy cow, like our little community where we live, it would just be like so much more amazing. Yeah, people be able to breathe. I mean, you, you you really can't breathe around that stuff. It's like you're suffocating in your own stuff. And it's like, if you could help a person off the bridge and they weren't going to jump, I mean, why would you not want to help them? I mean, why would you want to see that person jump? Why would you want that trauma going through your head of knowing that you could have helped them stop jumping off that cliff? I mean, there's so many people who are sitting on that cliff every day just wondering if they're going to jump or not. And it's just like, holy tamale, you don't have to be in this mindset. You can choose to get off the bridge and you don't have to jump now. You know, I mean, there's just so many different things that are going on in people's lives that you feel that are so life and death when they're really not that big of an issue. Like, I mean, like some of this stuff is just like we, we, we build it up. What's the word I'm looking for? Fluster, muster, build up whatever else it might be you just don't have to be in that mindset and you know so time so many times we're so used to being that same person all the time that you just that's your go-to like like i would shut down to athena and i just i wouldn't talk to her i wouldn't do nothing i just shut down and i'm just like all right fine you don't talk to me no big deal i won't call her for a day and a half you know and you know and, and that that just happened like months ago and it was my own self I had to come back and say okay that was wrong and doing that because i was in my own spot so we we tend to go back to where we sometimes what our habit is our, our habit. Probing, yeah. program. But then you just realize I don't have to be in this spot. I don't have to be this way. I can snap myself out of it. And then, you know, once one of us snapped herself out of it, the other ones are like, holy shit, you know, okay, now I'm stuck in this thing. So I have to snap myself out of it. And sometimes it's just coach work. And yeah, we're not pros by any means. And you know, we're we're figuring this out for ourselves too. But as we learn, we want to teach you guys the same thing too because we're just sharing what yeah. we've learned. I don't even know if it's teaching. I think it's just sharing. Sharing. Yeah, yeah sharing. we're just sharing. And whatever, sharing caring. Whatever, well, whatever you can take from things. it, yeah. <laughs> then that's great. But, you yeah. know, sometimes it's just as simple as if you know you've been in a ditch, it's just deciding, I'm going to do the opposite of what I normally do. Yeah, I'm not going to turn right. I'm going to turn left. <laughs> <laughs> and so, well, I used to I know do that this, ditch so is there. <laughs> I'm going to just do the opposite. And, um, and sometimes that's just an easy step is doing the opposite. But if you find yourself in a position where you have found a mentor, it's like, you know, some of the things that I appreciate about the people that, that I've mentored is that they're grateful, that they're respectful of my time, like they show up for the meeting, that they come prepared if we agreed that some action steps were going to happen, that they, they're actually coming prepared. I I really enjoy work working with people who want want like they have the motivation to like get past where they're at like they're done they're ready and um and i know that for people that you've like spent countless hours on mm. the phone and in person with like when you see them responding in that way it encourages you that you're not on a lost hope case yeah when you're when you're trying to mentor somebody you want to hear everything they're saying you want to be able to receive everything they're talking about and as long as you're willing to give them information or things like that and they're willing to receive it but they're still stuck on that same that same track you know yeah. like, no but you don't understand no you don't understand and i think the best line i heard the actually one of the best lines i've shared with oh a bunch my of my gosh. friends here we go one of our Fantasia. people in our group <laughs> she shouldn't say any names <laughs> But one of the people in our group was talking about something that she was just struggling with so much, and it was something like this. And uh, I love Danny's response on it. And and, and she uh, she was just talking about a problem that she was having internally, and she's like, "It's like my family is stuck on stupid." And I'm like, "Oh my god!" I, I almost spit my water out. I was like, "What did she just say?" Because it's one of those things that you're not used to hearing. It was something I've like never this. heard it framed like that. I never before. heard it framed like that. But uh, you know what? Really, I mean, what a great way to an analogy to think of it is because all I thought of is a selector. Like you know, you're on the selector. Like you're good. You're okay. You're happy. You're this. And then you're like you're over here to the right, like stuck on stupid. Like it wouldn't come off that fucking selector. And I'm <laughs> like, dude, she just said she say stuck. And literally, I I grabbed up my phone. I said the stuck. My family's stuck on stupid. Not like I think my family's stuck on yeah. stupid. It was the phrase and the way that she put it out. And and then on the other part of that, um, 
the person that we're listening to says, are they stuck on stupid? Or are you stuck on stupid? Like we want so much change to happen. And sometimes in some for people, other people, for other people that like our family members or our friends or somebody is struggling through steep hill and they're like, but, but you don't understand, but you don't understand. If they that just was me. knew what I knew, yeah, then if, they wouldn't be like if that. You knew what I was going through right now. You wouldn't understand. And I was thinking to myself, well, if you want them to change so much, but they're not willing to change, who's the person that's in the wrong? I mean, if they're not willing to take that information in and they're not willing to receive it, and you just keep say, playing the same track or an eight track and you're hitting track four or track four and you won't get past that, who's the one that's really stuck on stupid? I mean, really, that's what my I resonated from that thing. And I'm like, oh my God, I've been stuck on stupid so many fucking times. But <laughs> I was like, holy shit, I know track four very well. Track four, track four, <laughs> track four. And I'm like, I was stuck on stupid because I wanted to change everybody to my mindset instead of I was not willing to listen to something else. And there's people I have disliked in this town or in this group that I really saw that were struggling. And I thought to myself, okay, I can get myself out of my own realm and I'm going to really to help them. Somebody is like trashed me that has talked shit about me and done all this other stuff but i saw they were stuck on stupid and i thought okay i'm willing to help that person because i see that they're in a bad mindset and i i know you know who i'm talking about and i thought to myself okay i'm willing to put myself out there even though this person is just trashed and done everything they could to hurt me as this company it wasn't about me it was about a higher calling that I saw somebody that was struggling so bad that was really bad and that's always resonated with me. And I'm like, okay, I'm at peace with this now. I, I don't I don't have to like this person. I don't have to do it. But they're stuck in such a rut that I knew about at some time that maybe the only person I can, that, that would be able to receive, that might be able to receive it would be me because they're stuck in such a bad place that you had to have it as such an outside source that wouldn't be your friend, wouldn't be an inside source, it had to be an outside source. And I think some of the education I've gotten has been from those people too before. Yeah. That have been, not people have maybe not hated me or not liked me or disliked me, but somebody who was willing to take the time and just say, okay, I realize where we're at, I'm gonna help you. Even though you might not receive it, in my mind, I have to help you. I have to show you that there's a different way. And then you can choose to do with whatever you want with that. You can receive it or not. You can't say that nobody told you. No. Or, or you can't say that somebody didn't want to help you or if you really wanted the help, the help is there. Yeah. And I think that's true in every case that no matter how deep the ditch is that that person that you know is in or that you might be in, there's somebody always willing to help if you're willing to own your life like own the accountability that you have in the situation. And when you decide that you're going to take responsibility for your life, other people show up and support you 100%. And I'll, I'll name drop again, Kimberly and Bill. I mean, we had them on our podcast, been your one, your sister, your best friend forever since you were a little girl. And we met Bill before we even put Kimberly and Bill together, you know, um, they've helped us out of so many ditches and we've helped them out of ditches and like we've had this reciprocal of like ditch doing diving, life together ditch diving and, <laughs> ditch diving and then we were the ones that bailed either ditch out and 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 it would be relationship or businesses or ideas or whatever it is i know bill's a guy i can call 24 hours a day and they he might have to take an Uber. He might have to take an Uber <laughs> to help us, <laughs> but he'd be willing to help us. And if yeah. I was really in the ditch, he would be one of my guys I'd call. And, and Justin Creech would be another one. There's, a, there's so many people that I'm so fortunate that I know that uh, I always say, I, if you ever had to bury a body, who would you call? You know, I, I'm never going to bury a body, but I'm just saying if you were ever in a super ditch problem or something you'd have to do, who would be your top five people you'd call? Who's your top three? Who's your top two? Who could you call that you know that if you're in trouble, they would drop everything right now and do it? You know, and so I always look at that and saying, you know, those are your key people that you always know that are in your life that if they called you, you should be reciprocal in the same thing. Like you would drop everything right then and there and go help. And and that's part of being in that community. Like we have these we have these close core community members, and then we have like maybe the the next layer out and the next layer out, and it's. My it's circles. like yeah, your your circles of of different levels of trust, and some of them overlap each other. Some of them are just solid because it's the core. But it's really like coming to a place where you have to choose to get off that island because none of none of the greatness that people have 
in this like dream or that they aspire to attain happens with just you. You need you need help. You need encouragement. You you need people to come alongside and carry the load. You know, I had mentioned the uh, the Clydesdale principle where yeah. one Clydesdale can pull 700 pounds, two Clydesdale can pull 3,000 pounds. And I feel like that's been true in our life. I, I feel like had we been able to receive earlier and together as a team, we would have been so much further down our journey but this was what was meant for us in this time and i'm grateful for the space that we're in now and the traction that we we probably go faster now because we've learned a bunch of things so Carry it's easier pounds. to yeah <laughs> so we're going a lot faster than we did when we first started out but it's like it's having some vulnerability and humility in in the space of your life too and being being there like making the decision to be there i think some of it will get uncomfortable as well yeah and uncomfortability is not i I realize it's not a bad thing now it's like when you're uncomfortable about something like like try to put me in a tutu i'm not going to feel so comfortable about it but you know i mean once you see 70 other guys in a tutu like oh shit man fuck maybe i have to put on a tutu you know i mean we're we're doing this we're doing this right now we're doing it but nobody's videotaping this you know but (laughs) you do it and and i when athena was saying that lifting the three thousand pounds between the two clydesdale i always look at that as like when you're lifting weights and you're bench pressing and you can just barely get it up and then you see guys a, a single person take two fingers and just it, maybe they're only lifting 10 or 12 pounds. It's that 10 or 12 pounds you need taken off your back to get that bar up. And it's not like they're heave hoeing because you decided to lift 800 pounds by yourself. Yeah. You went from 350 to 370 pounds and that last 20 pounds was the tough part. And you got a friend that's gonna help you lift that last 20 pounds off of your chest. They're just barely lifting it up. But to you, it's the world because yeah. you're like, you're struggling at that point and you just can't get that bench bar up. And they take two fingers, and I'll never forget lifting weights and just two fingers, and it just helped it up. And you're like, you did that. And I'm like, no, you helped me. And he goes, I put like five, I lifted five pounds of that. That's it. It's the extra five pounds you can't lift that you just need sometimes to help you get that lifted up. And I, I think as business owners, and you know, um, name dropping again, I, I talked to Matt McKenna and Justin Creech and Brent Sanders. There's a bunch of people we talk about this businesses that we all do. And I talked to Matt quite a bit about things that were going on, what we're doing, because we both live in Big Lake in there. And it's the small things that help us get through those things that we just we just need it. And our employees never really realize like the, I think sometimes when we talk about this and healthiness, it's like we're working this 16 or 17 hours a day and we're just throwing whatever in our body to get fuel. And we think it's okay because we're eating less because we're doing this. And then all of a sudden we, we really come be, it was funny the other day, he was like, we're fat and out of shape, Charlie. Because we're just we worked ourselves to death, and I think to myself, okay, but we don't have to work ourselves to death anymore. I mean, we're choosing sometimes for us to continually work as hard as we want to because we want to have things for our kids. Like you know, he was mentioning in college to his kids. He was mentioning about these things. You know, he has to make this much money to put his kids through college, and you know, he's in a very good financial place where he's up way probably better than we are right now, but. In our mindset, we have to do this stuff too, and we want to know it. We wanted to give more to our kids, so well, we have six jet skis. Why well, we need six jet skis? Why well, we have eight snow machines? Why well, we need eight snow machines? Because in our mind, we want to give them what we didn't have to do, but we want our, and it's our own mindset. And so, I think sometimes we have to just come out of our mindset and just say, "What's enough?" And what do we have to do? And are, are we happy? Is this thing stuff making her happy or not? So. Anyways, um, when I bring that up, it's just the like-mindedness of business owners and things that we do that we think that we have to continue doing. And as you say, you think me the happiest I've been, it's just like, it's not because I own stuff. It's not because we have stuff. It's just like, we don't have those blockages anymore. We don't have that weight on our 300 pound elephant. The on limiting beliefs. That limited we're... beliefs that you can do this. And as you guys, as business owners, you're just starting out and doing things. Don't be so hard on yourself. Don't don't beat yourself up because you didn't get that one contract. If you didn't get that contract and somebody else is the lower bidder, let you them don't have want it. it. <laughs> you didn't want that shit anyways. It, it's 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 paying you little to no money. Take the contract that's much smaller that gives you bigger dividends and rewards. Yeah. Um, if people talk to us say you're probably one of the most expensive companies out there in transportation. I don't want to be the cheapest person in transportation. The cheapest person doesn't have a, a shop and a warehouse and has employees that run it. 
Um, it doesn't make you more successful. It doesn't make you, it just chooses where you want to be in life. And I want those higher generating revenue contracts and I want to work for some of the best people there is because I want to give the best product there is too. I want to give them the highest quality. I want to give them the best vehicles. I want to do that stuff because that's where I choose to want to be in life right now. And those are the type of customers that we want is people that are choosing that they want to they want to deal with less hassles and less drama. And I mean, if you go with a lower bidder, then their equipment's probably not as nice and their infrastructure is probably not as organized. And so then there's like, there's like stuff that you get when you go to the cheaper bidder that you don't get. I think you're hundred percent correct on that. And, and the same thing we want in our friendships from our friends. We don't want, I don't want a person that is, uh, I, I need to look at this way and say that. I want to give to my friends. I want to freely give and I want them, I, and I, I, I'm not looking for reciprocal. I'm not looking for them to give me a bunch of stuff. I, I'm looking for somebody that's honest, truthful, and, and best. And I want to be around positive energy. I want to be around somebody that is positive, that is outgoing, that is like-minded, that wants to elevate their self because it's what I'm looking for. Yeah. So when I look for that, I look for another positive person that is like, yeah, you know, you can do this. And if I have a question like, hey, you know, I, I need to call Justin. I ask him about this. He's going to give me the best, what he knows is best. And I look for him because I believe him and I know where he's at. And I know that he's going to give me a good, honest answer. He's not going to blow smoke. He's not going to do this. Say, Shit, Charlie, you know, this is what I think I would do and stuff like that. I look for that in a friend. I look for that in a person that I want to spend my time with. Makes and sense. There is so many people that you, as a business people, that you know you uh, you surround yourself around, and if you surround yourself around people that have that negativity and that stuff, and it's like well, you're never going to grow. As you were mentioning earlier, it's like you know your limited beliefs because your body's always trying to protect you and tell you that you don't want that next higher self because it's scary. It's not. It's what's going to happen? It's, it's it's risky, but you know, um, you when you open those blinders up, you don't have those limited beliefs. Yeah. That's good. And then when and you always told me about limited beliefs. I'm like, what is she talking about? She's just crazy. No, you know what you told me? No. Yeah. Well, why are you reading all those stupid books? Because <laughs> they were stupid to me. Because <laughs> I'm not a big reader. She's, and you know what you would tell me? Why don't you read 20 books? I'm reading I'm reading a book every eight days. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, at the end of it, though, you can see how it affects the people that you work with, how it affects your family. And it, and even if you're somebody who doesn't have kids, you could have nieces and nephews, you could have friends who have children, and you don't know the seeds that you're planting for them. And so you could be planting seeds of creating an island, and I can do it all myself, and I don't need you, or you could be creating this openness of, hey, I, I want to I wanna grow and learn the very best that I can, so who's the top person around me that I need to spend time with? Or, or what can I do to just get in the, the atmosphere of them? One of our kids, she wants to get into, um, she wants to become a doctor. And I'm like, you don't have to be a nurse's aide as your first job. Go be the secretary. Just marinate in the energy of the people that you want to be around. And you'd be surprised how contagious it is. And I think that's what we talk about these groups that we get into yeah. is, is in going back to our core of this whole thing that we're talking about in this cast is like when you're around that kind of people, uh, if you want to be around doctors, you want to be around EMS, if you want to be around firefighters, you want to be around engineers, you want to be around business-like people, you got to surround yourself in there. If you want to be around people that are like-minded like you, find people that are interesting in groups that have the same cores and values that you do, and you will get all that. I mean, that all that positive energy and that positive vibes you get from those people are like, holy tamale. Yeah. And then it lets you know, hey, do I really want to be in this realm of people? Because now you're around 100 of them. Now you're around 300 of them. You're now you're around 1,000 people that are doing breath work. And you're like, what is this noise in this room? I mean, if I was going by some of these rooms and I heard these people breathing in and breathing out, I'm like, what the hell is going on in there? But when you're in the moment of it and you're seeing it and you're seeing the effects of how it's affecting people you're like okay there is something to this okay i'm not crazy this is not woo woo this is really actual stuff and when you're talking about financials and you're hearing somebody where their progress has been where they've opened their minds at it's crazy it's like 
holy sugar, I've been where they're at or I want to be where they're at. Right. And right. I think that's where the, the, the different levels is like you have the beginner levels, you have the mid levels, you have the higher levels and you have the highest levels. And you're like, holy moly, Danny's vision. And I go back to Danny because we're in his group now. His vision's so huge, so big that it's like, it's so, it seems like it's unattainable. It's not though. It's, you it's can like, see it. You can see it now because he makes it very clear. Um, his his fine his his vision for his business and you had mentioned like breath work that's just that in part of one of our our health intensives the the power of just breathing with your whole body like Charlie had mentioned before with your stomach it's like it's remarkable how just getting some more oxygen flowing through your blood makes such a difference yeah you know, when you look at his visions, and it's just not his financial side, it's his health, his wellness, his his marriage, how he really wants that to be the only person in his life and all this other stuff, his kids, his family, his visions are so high and he has intentionality. Around all of it, yeah. All of it. He has intentionality every food he eats. I mean, I, I, I we're now on this new kick of uh, eating more organic food. And I was like, organic, that's like woo-woo. You know, that's, 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 that's no, a hippie. No, no, that's just that's minus those, the pesticides. That, that's, that's, the, that's the hippie people that are, you know, that, that I, when I look at organic, I, I think this, like, I, I have this because limiting that's belief. that's a belief that I had a limiting adopted. belief that, yes, but organic just means it doesn't have pesticides and things like that. I'm like, why well, were we ordering this organic? She goes over this organic section. It's so small here. Like, we go in yeah, we our cars and our Fred Meyer and it's so small in it and all it is is it's the same stuff it just doesn't have pesticides so organic was a kind of a weird word to me i was like organic what is that you know we're going to eat organic food i wish they would call it like no pesticide food then it would seem <laughs> like so like much you more wrap your head i could wrap my head around it but i i had this limited belief about organic and so all it is is just like it doesn't have like these roundup <laughs> roundup and gmos and all these crazy shit that might be in this stuff that we're eating that what it's not healthy to our bodies and when danny explained it it was a little bit differently it was like I'm not going to put bad fuel into my body. I'm going to put the most positive and same. And if I can't get it, I'm going to look for the best thing that's next to it. Yeah. But I'm intentionally looking at restaurants that have it, all the food that he intentionally sets up for us, all the stuff that he had for us when we went to the Ritz Carlton and had dinner with him. He, he picked out that hand menu that was like, it had certain foods that were in there that was so healthy that was there. Shit, I, I just thought we're at the Ritz Carlton eating a great dinner. You know, I didn't realize that there was all that. All that intentionality behind it and i think that's where it really resonates with danny is like he's intentionally looking at restaurants he looks at the best places he can eat it's the healthiest but it's the very best he doesn't look at something and say well i i don't want to spend like he used a, a thing and it's like uh, if you want a 150 dollar wagyu steak it's a grade five wagyu get it it's okay you don't have to you don't have to settle for that 39 dollars t-bone that wasn't so great it wasn't gonna be if so healthy for your body it. if you can afford it yes but then he also told the people if you really want to get into the group of the people that you want to be around go to the rick's carlton and order yourself a side salad and a if tea. you can't afford a steak you can still be in the atmosphere you can still be in that atmosphere order and, a salad and and it's not the prestigious of being at that place it's if where you want to be at. if you want to be a race car driver Put yourself as a pit man, put yourself as a flagger, put yourself in that environment of those people because yeah. when you're around those people, somebody's gonna recognize you. And if you're a star and you wanna be a star, they're gonna recognize that and they're gonna ask you to be in their pit boss. They're gonna ask you to do this and all of a sudden they're you're gonna, gonna ask drive. You to dinner. They're gonna ask you to dinner. And and with some of the works that we've done as we started off doing crew for them, then we started off doing wheelchairs, then we started off doing baggage comes over, all the different opportunities when you sit around those people, those opportunities come up and they notice they, your hard work and, and and your energy, your positive energy. Yeah. And your willingness to be helpful. Just as we did in wheelchairs and we went into ambulances, you know, and I mean, how does that work and how does that relate to your business? Where do you want to be? We have uh, people that we listen to in these different groups that are in there that they just, they want to be around this person. So how do you attract those same like-minded people? Yeah. And I think for some of um, our listeners, this might be the first time that you're even like hearing something like this. And really it, it just boils down to what do you want? What do you want? Do you want more of what you've been getting? Then keep doing what you're doing. If you want something different, is there someone in your peripheral or off in the distance that you see, actually, I see them, they're happy. I want what they want. Well, go find out how, how it, what is going on with them that, that you're attracted to. And a lot of time, I, I mean, I like to say the answers are in the books, but 
I, I have all different modes of learning. It's not just being in a community. I think that's a really great part of the encouragement piece for me and listening to new ideas, but it's also audio books, reading books, podcasts. Like there are um, so m different online workshops. Like there's so much available to us and it's so cheap now. Whereas before you would have to like, really like dig dig deep to order CDs online. And um, now it's like, it's, I feel like there's no excuse, especially for the younger generation, because education is just like all the barriers to entry almost uh, have been virtually wiped away. And if you're not a person that really gets out of the books in there, I'm, I'm not a big per book person. I'm, I'm more of a doer, learn it, see it, touch it, feel yeah. it, smell it. You can just get around people that are, are like-minded like you or or get somebody like if you know a person that is in your industry, you can always go to them and say, hey, you know, I'm really struggling with this. Would you take some time and maybe just teach me because this is something I really want to learn how to do. And I am an open book. I, I will do whatever I can to do it. And sometimes just going up and asking, say, I can't even tell you how many people have come up to me and said, hey, I really love your story and I really want to do it. Do you have some time? I mean, being part of the National Limousine Association, mm -hmm. I'll, I'm going to throw that out there. There's so many people that are, that are one or two or three car operators. And I remember being that person. I remember being going to- Being nervous to talk oh, to one of the bigger guys. Talking to JJ Bell, Bell Transportation. And they were massive. They were one of the biggest in the industry. And buying our first limos from JJ Bell, I'm like, you know, if I didn't mind if I asked you a few questions and because yeah, we have no idea what we're doing we're just going to start buying two limos and a bus yeah. and we're going to be that party guys and then you know talking to a george jacobs and talking to the leaders of our industry and now as we're getting older and we're in the group and we're doing it and they see the success stories that we're having and stuff we get those people coming to us and saying hey i really want to do it and they're like one year jnr decided to buy a memberships for two new members that haven't been in there and we just popped down the money because we thought it was the right thing to do yeah. we were trying to encourage other people to do it and those people we've become friends with and now we're talking to them and then we're we're, we're doing things with them and they're asking us questions and now they're becoming leaders to other newer people. So yeah. it's it's like, it's like um, what's the word I'm looking for? Passing it on. It's like uh, it's handing the torch yeah. over. You're, you're, you're doing the right thing because George and the Bells and the other people did the stuff and the Raymers and all these people that we were friends with that Mo and all these other people have, have taken their time in their time in their walk of life to say, yeah, let me give you some of my time. Let me do it. Because that time is precious. And when I say that time is precious, we only have so much time on this earth. And we only have so much time in a day. And there's 24 hours. But if you make the time, you'll change somebody else's life. Yeah. So it's really this piece of um, be a mentor and a mentee uh, to someone. Yeah. And just keep on your growth mindset. And we're looking forward to the next episode and we hope you join us. This and one was fun. The last one was fun too. Yeah, this is uh, probably the most good. we've laughed and the more comfortable we get. I, I'm not worried about what I'm wearing. I'm not worried about it. I'm like, hell with that shit, man. We're here. If I can, if you, if you're watching this podcast, you must like this it is, because this is who we're, we are. We're, 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 we're up in the numbers. We're not even saying what numbers we're at anymore. We're just, we're just doing them man, yeah. because this is fun. This is what we like and doing. And, and, and you guys understand we're paying to have people come and film this and do this so we can teach you guys and show you guys what it's done for us share. because yeah. this is what's important to us. Yeah. We want to give back. So so if you have any questions. Check us out and by all means, send us some questions if you have more questions. See you later. Next time. Bye guys. Bye.